Hello, and welcome to our talk on ozonolysis reactions. This is meant to be a little bit more detailed than you might see in your textbook or you might hear in a normal lecture, so hopefully you'll find it helpful. At this point, I want to point out that I have put out a one-page um, supplemental about ozonolysis because sometimes the mechanism is kind of hard to find, so you can find that online. Um, if you can't find it, just let me know. So we'll start off just summarizing ozonolysis reactions and what they are. So an ozonolysis reaction is when you react a double bond with ozone, that's O3 here, at low temperatures, that's minus 78 degrees Celsius, and then you have some sort of workup at the end. So in this case, we're using DMS, which is dimethyl sulfide. It's a reductive addition, but you can use different things at the end to get different products, but this is the one we're going to focus on today. So as you can see, this reaction has two interesting features. The first is that we are able to make um, a carbonyl, so that's a double bond O. So as you can see, we've got that on both, both of these products. And also, it has two products, because in this case, it's doing a cleavage, a cleavage meaning to cut. So it's cutting the double bond in half, and the carbons are ending up on the two sides. Because of this, you're actually able to get either a ketone or an aldehyde from this reaction. And you might get a mixture, or you might get two of each. For example, if we look at this next example, we've got a double one here, right? So the kind of product's going to come from splitting it here, so maybe we'll just draw a line there, and then it's going to break into those two pieces. So when it breaks, you basically take the two pieces and add oxygens to the end, and it would look like this. So in this case, now we have two ketones, because if you look at the double bond, each side of that double bond had two carbons, whereas the one above, on carbon three, there was a hydrogen there. So hopefully that makes sense. So that's sort of how the reaction works. Basically, when we summarize what happens, it is adding O3 to the double bond. That's why it's in this section of material. It's also an oxidation because you're adding oxygen. The next thing we want to emphasize is that this results in cleavage. So if sometime soon you see a reaction where we're losing carbons, this is probably how it's happening because this is the only one we should know so far. So cleavage means it cuts it and that's how we're losing the carbons. One piece we'll usually throw away and then one piece we would keep. Usually the part with the more carbons is the part we're going to keep. Lastly, I want to reiterate that it's always going to form a carbonyl type of functional group. So in this case, we have the ketone or aldehyde that we can form. It can also form some other carbonyl compounds like carboxylic acids, um, but we're not really to that section yet. That's You use a different thing at the end instead of the DMS to get that kind of product. Of course, because we're in a section where we're talking about double bond chemistry, we're going to check and see if there's any special regiochemistry or stereochemistry. So the regiochemistry for this is just wherever the double bond is. So wherever the double bond is, that's where you're going to split it, and that's where you're going to get your products from. There's no rearrangement, there's no carbocations, there's nothing like that. Okay? And stereochemistry, as you can see in the product, there's not any stereochemistry because they're both flat. They're both sp2 carbons, which are trigonal planar, which is a flat plane. So they can't have a chiral center, so they're not really considered stereochemical at all. So we don't worry about that. When you actually do the addition in the mechanism, you'll see that the ozone is going to add to the same side because it adds at the same time. So it's technically a syn addition at that part, but the final product doesn't have any special stereochemistry. So now that hopefully everyone's caught up on the basics of ozonolysis, let's talk about the mechanism because it's a pretty cool one. So I'll point out that this is another split mechanism where you don't have to know the whole thing. Um, you do want to know up to the secondary ozonide, that's this thing right here, um, that's how far you want to go. The mechanism of how the sulfur um, reacts to make the double one O is a reduction, and it's kind of, it's just weird and not really what we're focused on right now, so I don't want to get too distracted by it. So you don't have to show the mechanism of this. If it was you know, on a test or something, I would just show the first two things and not show the part with the sulfur at all. So you'd see the final product was this weird ring thing, okay? So don't worry about the second part of that. All right, so the first thing that's happening in the ozonolysis is we need to be able to draw the structure of ozone, right? Because that's how we're going to be able to use it, and it actually has stuff happening in the structure. So the structure of ozone looks like this. So it's got a double bond, and it also has two charges. So it's got a negative and a positive charge based on how the electrons are, okay? So... As we know in this section, that double bonds are actually weak nucleophiles. So that's going to act as our nucleophile, and it's going to attack. So if I have a choice of sides of the ozone to attack, which one am I going to attack? Right, I'm going to probably not attack the negative side. That would probably be not a good choice. So I'm going to choose to attack the oxygen on the other side. So when you do that, it's going to have to push the double bond up so you don't get too many electrons on oxygen. So that's going to go to the positive charge. 
And then at the same time, this is going to attack back. So kind of like when we talked about how bromonium ions are formed and they attack back and mercury does that, except for in this case, it's a different oxygen that's actually attacking. It's not going to make a three-membered ring. It's going to make a five-membered ring. So this oxygen here with a negative charge is actually going to attack. And five-membered rings are very stable, so that's a normal thing that could happen. Okay? So then when we draw the products, it's going to look like this. So notice in the product, we don't we're not gonna have any more charges. Everything's gonna be connected, but there's no more charges, right? Because we filled in the positive and the negative got taken away when it went up to make the um, attack at carbon two, okay? So no charges. All right, so now what we have to do is figure out how we're gonna get from this thing, which is called the primary ozonide, meaning the first ozonide thing that ozone added to, um, to the secondary ozonide that's shown up at the top. So obviously we're going to have to rearrange some stuff, right? We need the oxygens to not be together. Um, we need to split it. So it actually breaks apart and then goes back together, which seems weird, but that's what it does. So we're going to take either side of the oxygen lone pairs on the side, not the middle one, and have that come down. So I'll take this lone pair and draw an arrow here to make a double bond, okay? And then I'm gonna, this is the big cleavage part where I break the carbon-carbon bond between two and three, right? That's the goal, I'm trying to get to cleavage. So between two and three, I need to break that bond and have it go up to one of the sides with the oxygen, okay? And then when that happens, it's also gonna have too many electrons on oxygen if I don't break that bond, so it's going to go from this bond to this oxygen to make a negative charge. Okay, so let's draw what that product's gonna look like. Okay, so first we're gonna have the oxygen on this side um, with two oxygens, right, and those carbons. And then we're gonna have charges. So on that side, we should have a positive here because the arrow went away from the oxygen, right? So that's positive. And then a negative on the end because the arrow went to that part, right? And then on the other side, we're going to have the product that looks like this. And then that doesn't have any charges because arrows went to it, but arrows also went away from it. So electrons didn't change the charge, okay? Now, if we look at the top, the two oxygens are obviously coming from this piece, but the other one's sort of flipped. So what I like to do is just draw it flipped. You could just draw one. You don't have to draw both of these. So maybe I'll erase this one and just draw the flipped version if that's okay. And then that's how we're gonna draw it. And then now we need to put it back together. So what are the bonds we need to make to make that go back together? We need to have the double oxygen part, this part up here, attack the carbon of this ketone now. So that, let's do that first. So that negative charge goes to that ketone carbonyl. And then the double bond of the oxygen goes up, but it actually goes over to attack the other one. So that way they can be attached. So it sort of swings around the oxygen to attach to the carbon on this side. And then it's going to push the electrons from the double bond back up. And that's going to give us all single bonds again to make the secondary ozonide. So that's the end of the mechanism for what you have to draw. You only have to show that part. Um, the cool thing about this mechanism that helps me is if I just sort of remember the patterns. So if you look at the first step, it's got three arrows, right? It's got two charges and three arrows. So that's the important thing. The most important thing is double bond attacks the side that's not negative and the negative attacks the double bond on the other carbon. So that's kind of key. And then the middle one just has to move to make all single bonds. Then we're making the five-membered ring, so that's the next step. And that one also has three arrows, right? We have, we have the one where we're breaking the carbon-carbon bond. We have the one where we're making the O minus to break the oxygen bonds, and then the one where it's making the double bond on the side, okay? And then if you look at the next one, we've broken it into the pieces, right? So you can figure out how you wanna split that based on the product. And then you can have three arrows again. So start with the negative charge, go to the carbonyl so you can connect it, and then have that double bond come over to get the other carbonyl carbon, and then push that one up to fill in the positive charge. So if you're not totally sure, you can practice it obviously, but it helps to check that you have three arrows on each step and that you're going charges, ring, charges, ring. Right, there's no charges on the rings and then anything that has two molecules coming together it has charges on one side. So hopefully walking through the mechanism with some help um, was helpful, but if you have any questions, let me know. And with that, we're at the end of our video. I hope you found it helpful and make sure you check out any Blackboard activities that are on this section, all right? So have fun and I'll see you next time.